Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all ready? Y'all chit-chatting. I don't want to get in the midst of that. <laughs> Just trying to slip my way in a little bit. Well, praise God. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord once again on our Bible study Tuesday night. The Word of God, the Bread of Life. Y'all ready for it? Now, this Bible study, I'm trying. I'm trying my best to go verse by verse. And so, um, you know, most of the time I teach like in topics or different things, but this time I'm trying very hard to take it verse by verse. And of course, you know, in it, we'll take other scriptures to back up what we're talking. So what I'm trying to say is we might be in the book of James for a little longer than normal, which is fine. It's not a long book, but there's a lot of meat in here. And as we introduced it last week, we talked about, make it very clear, he's talking to mature Christians, giving us some meat so we can grow and become better for Jesus. So welcome to Bible study tonight. We'll continue in the book of James, but before we do, let's start with prayer, okay? Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for this time to be in your house. We're thankful for your love, mercy, grace. Thank you for the word of God. I pray, God, that you will bless, accomplish your will, have your way tonight. Open our understanding to your word and help that the teaching of your word will make sense to each and every one of us, and that we will receive something from the Word of God to help us in our walk with you. Bless and accomplish your will tonight, I pray, and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're in the book of James. We introduced it last week and covered the first four verses. And we dealt with, like we said, in this time, the disciples were going through persecutions, temptations, trials, and all these things. And so he, he wrote to them, encouraging them to be in control. You know, take control of the situation that, you know, we all, we all have different things that we face in life. But if we can be in control of it, it will be a whole lot better. And, and, you know, instead of letting the things, the situation, the trials have control of us, if we can be in control of it, then we can, you know, we can guide it the way we want it to go. In a sense, you know, not that we have total control over everything, but we can be in a better position if we keep our head <laughs> while the rest of the world are losing theirs. <laughs> you know, we can stay in, um, in control, in better, in better control of things. And so we want to continue tonight, and we'll pick up in verse 5. And they probably all run together because he's writing this to the disciples. And so the next thing he dealt with, so last week was control, patience, control and patience possess your soul. And so he wrote to them, or continue writing, he said in verse 5, he said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not, and it shall be given unto him. In verse 6, he said, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And so he's talking about the next thing here that we need as Christians. Yes, we have to stay in control. But there's something else we need. We need wisdom. We need absolute wisdom. And now there are different ways you can get, or I don't know, I could say different ways you can get wisdom. You can get knowledge from different ways by studying and learning and all these things. But it seems here that wisdom comes from God. The fear of the Lord, the Bible tells us, is the beginning of wisdom. So you can learn and learn and learn, but if you don't have the fear of God in your life, in God's eyes, you really don't, you're not smart, right? He said, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. And then he talked about also that the wisdom of the wise, the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the sight of God. So really and truly true wisdom, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, true wisdom comes from God. And it's very simple to attain it. He said all you have to do is ask for it. All you have to do is ask for it. And we were preaching a Sunday night about a heart. And, I, and I, I shared this. I wasn't kidding. I said, I pray God fill this thing with your wisdom, you know. Increase my ability to learn, God. Help me open up my mind. Let me learn. If, I, if, if you want me to learn something, help me to do it. Yes, I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to read and study and learn and 
do those kind of things, but I still need God to help me to rightly, rightly divide His Word. I need, still need God to, to give me the ability to think things through and to have uh, good judgment. Because <laughs> we have seen it time and time again. Very smart, educated people. They have all kind of degrees and they still do dumb things. <laughs> right? It is because they have the knowledge and they have, maybe they have street smarts and different things, but they really don't have that pure wisdom, that true wisdom that comes from God. And so God is saying to us here, He said, if you lack it, ask. Right? If you lack it in your life, He said, ask. Ask, and, and, and we see a great example of this in, um, in uh, I'll read a, uh, this passage to you in Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 7 through 12. And you know Solomon was one of the wisest men that ever lived outside of Jesus Christ. And how did he get his wisdom? He didn't learn, I mean, in the beginning, he didn't learn much from books and all that stuff. I'm sure he did, but when it came, when it came to his great wisdom, it came straight from God. God gave it to him. Amen. Right? God gave it to him. And, and so he, he wrote in the Proverbs, he said, wisdom in Proverbs 4, 7, I think it is. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. He said, get wisdom, and in all thy getting, get understanding. Right? And so he let us know that the first thing in life that we need, the most, the principal thing, or the main thing, or the, st the main structure of things is the wisdom that we need in our life to make sound decisions, right decisions, to, to do the right thing, to know when to control this thing, call our tongue, right? Or how to control our mind, or how to conduct our life. We need wisdom in every aspect of our life. We can have all the knowledge in the world, but if we don't know how to use it, properly use it, then what good is it? And so for us to properly use those things, we need the wisdom of God. And, and so he made it so simple, so simple for us to get it. He said, and I prayed as even as I was walking down the hallway coming to, to, to the pulpit tonight, God, just give me wisdom. Right? Just give me, just put it in my heart. Help me to know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Help me to know what to do, how to approach a situation, when to let things lay low. You know, you don't have to deal with everything right then and there. Sometimes it's better to let things simmer down before you jump in the fire with it, you know. And, and, and so God, give me the wisdom of how to deal with all these things. And so here Solomon uh, is assuming the, the position of the new king. David was getting, David had, had died, his father had died and turned the kingdom of Israel over to him under the um, guidance of God. And so he meet with God, or God met with him, I should say. And, and the Bible said here in Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, he said, in that night, God, in that night, did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, thou hast showed me, or showed great mercy unto David my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said unto Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, that thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither has Neither yet has asked long life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the like. And so here, God made it so simple. Solomon, what do you want? What do you want? He said, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom and knowledge that I may know how to conduct myself, that I will know how to be a good leader for this people, that I will know what to do, and all these things. And I notice he didn't say, God, tell me what book to read, or tell me what college to go to, 
or tell me which one the rabbi I should talk to. He said, Lord, you give it to me. Amen? And God gave him that wisdom. God is able to put wisdom in our mind. He's absolutely able to put wisdom in our mind, and he can do it. Amen? He can do it. He is, as the Bible speaks about Jesus, he said, who is the wisdom of God? You read in Proverbs, he talked about wisdom dwell with God in the very beginning. Before anything was created, it speaks of wisdom saying it was there, right there with God. So wisdom comes from God. Having that wisdom to do the right things, having that wisdom to make right decisions in every situation and, 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 and any, under any circumstances, whether we're under pressure or not, we can look to God. God, give me the ability to use wisdom in this situation. Or God, give me the, the wisdom to make the right decision in this, in this situation. And God will do it. So he told us, ask. Ask. And so going back to, to our Bible study there in the book of James, he said, listen to how he phrased He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him do what? <laughs> right? He said, just ask. Just ask me and I will give you wisdom. Now, if you look at Jesus' life also, the Bible said in John chapter 7, verse 15, he said, And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? They were looking at Jesus as he was teaching them, and he was uh, revealing scriptures to them. He was telling them things about their tradition, their history, their future, all these things. And I said, Jesus, you never went to any of the schools in Jerusalem. <laughs> you never went to Bible school, Bible college, any of these things. When, where did you get all this stuff from? Where did you get it from? From his father, right? God gave him, the Bible said he grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor. God was the one that placed the wisdom in his son. In Mark chapter 6, verse 2, he said, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence had this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? They were marveling at Jesus. Where did he get this from? He got it from his father. His father gave him the wisdom. Where can we get wisdom from? Yes, we can learn a lot of things in life, but the Bible even talked about people that learn. He said, they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know, today our university is full and, and the colleges are full of so many that are giving themselves over to learning and they still can't get it. They still, uh, and, and I'm not here to criticize and say fine fault, but they still can't get their life in order. They can't get their life in order. They can't get any of these things to work because they're all earthly wisdom. We need God's wisdom, amen? We need God's wisdom. Their wisdom, they're all, all the, the, the wisdom there, like from Solomon, Jesus, their wisdom came from God. And we can gain a lot of, like I said, a lot of things, but we need God. We need God. God's wisdom versus uh, Earthly wisdom. Let's look at what the book, book of James, we'll get to this eventually, but I want to read it to you. James chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. It says there, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of, if, out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. But if ye have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not or brag not, and lie not against the truth, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to, to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So he's comparing earthly wisdom to heavenly wisdom. I want that heavenly wisdom. 
Amen. He said the earthly wisdom is devilish, is sensual. You know, you may be street smart, but that doesn't mean you're smart. Amen. You may have a lot of things going for you, but if you don't have the fear of God in your life, then you really don't have a lot going on in your life. We need God. We need to have that fear of God. We need the Word of God. And that's the reason why it is so important for us to go back to the basics of reading the Bible, meditating on the Scripture, learning the Word of God, and applying it to our life. You see, all we have to do, as he said there in our Bible reading, and we're not going to stay much on wisdom, but it is thing, it's one of the things he, he shared. He said, all we have to do is ask. Ask God for wisdom. God, give me the wisdom that I need. God, give... And now, God's not going to give us anything that will inflate our mind and, and make us too proud, right? He's not going to give us anything that is bad for us. So if He's going to give us wisdom, He's going to give us also the understanding that this wisdom comes from God, and it's not to be... So we should vaunt ourselves or impress people, you know. But he'll give us the wisdom so that we can conduct our life properly and be a usable vessel in the sight. And so in verse 6, he said, but let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and toss. He said, all we have to do is ask, but he put a stipulation upon it or a condition if we want something from God, we want this wisdom from God, we must first, when we ask, he said we must believe, right? Ask in faith, God, I need this. I, I, I desire your wisdom. I want you to help my mind to be strong, my mind to think right, so that uh, when I'm placed in all these situations, I can make the right decision. You know, the bad decision is what really gets us in trouble. And, and a lot of times it comes uh, when we're under pressure. And, 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 and all these things are, are weighing heavy. They're coming. They attack from all different directions. And then we're under pressure. And, and uh, you know, we're not seeking God, but we're trying to figure it out or make the right decision on our own. And then who comes in? Satan comes in, right? And he began to put ideas and thoughts in our heads. You know, like I was telling my wife, you know, the, you know, you always notice how the snake, he just sort of hiss, like he's always trying to, you know, still, he's still trying to tell something like he did in the bar, Garden of Eden. You know, he's like, <laughs> he's always trying to hiss, trying to whisper something in your ears. Just like the devil, you shall not surely die. You know, you go and eat the fruit. God is keeping this back from you. God doesn't want you to have this. And so when we don't get God involved in our decision making, God involved in our life, or we're not seeking God and seeking God's wisdom, then that earthly wisdom can easily take over, which the Bible said is sensual and to a certain degree devilish and can create a lot of problem. Because what we, what we may think is right may not always be right. Amen? We need God's, God's wisdom to make the right decision. And so he said, but when we ask, we have to ask in faith. Believe in God. And he said, don't be double-minded. Don't be double-minded, he said in verse 7 for... Uh, or verse 6, verse 7, For let not that man think that he should receive anything of the Lord. In verse 8, For a double-minded a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, you know, we have, to, um, we have to believe God and trust God, single-minded. God, I believe you. I trust you. I know that what I ask you for, you will do. I know what I'm seeking and praying for, you will give. I'm single-minded. I'm not double-minded. I'm not praying and saying, God, I believe you. You're going to do this for me. Give this to me. You're going to fill me with wisdom. And then turn around and doubt God right after that. That's double-mind. That's unstable. You know what I'm saying? You either believe him or don't believe him. <laughs> right? And so we have to believe him. So what if I don't see? It doesn't matter. It's just, you just keep believing him. That's, that's what he said. Believe me. You ask and God will give. Amen? God will give. Verse 9 and 10. I said, we'll take this verse by verse. Verse 9 and 10, he said, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. And so now he's dealing with something different. First, he the first thing we dealt with was, was control, self-control. We're going through this time in our lives. His disciples were facing trials and battles and temptation. So they needed to take control of themselves, get control of themselves, have patience, wait on God. 
The second thing is we need wisdom to deal with all these situations uh, that may arise or that is arising or that you might be in right now, I don't know. And, and so you need the wisdom how to deal with that. That wisdom comes from God. Now he's talking about a different thing here, and that is humility. Humility. He said, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. And that's pretty much in the eyes of God. He's saying that uh, there is no class when it comes to a relationship with God. You can be rich or you can be poor. We all have to meet Jesus <laughs> at the foot of the cross. Amen. It doesn't matter. You can be a billionaire or you can be a man sitting on the streets with no money in his pockets. Or you can only get to heaven by one person and one person only. And that is by Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ and righteousness through Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only way to do it. You can't buy your way into heaven. <laughs> Or any other thing, you got to come by way of the cross. So he's saying, let the person that is poor and, 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 and lowly rejoice because God will bring him up to the same standard as the rich is, and he will bring the rich down. He will bring up the poor, and he will bring down the rich, so we all meet Jesus at the same level, the same plane, same level, right? It's just no big eyes and little U's in Jesus. We all need Jesus. You know, you're a billionaire, you still need to pray, you still need to have faith. You're a poor man, you still need to pray, you still need to have faith. You're a billionaire, billionaire, you still need to live right. You still need to walk humbly before God. You still need to learn to depend on God. You're a poor man, you need to do the same thing. And so there is no division in God. We all meet God at the same level. Amen. The only riches, the only thing that will distinguish us in heaven is how we serve the Lord. Because he said some will suffer loss because of their disobedience and their hard-heartedness and their unwillingness to do the will of the Lord. And he said they will suffer loss. But those who are obedient and do the will of God and give more to the Lord, they are building up a greater account in heaven. It's not going to be on earth. The distinction is going to be in heaven. Amen? What we do and how we build our account in heaven, how much treasure we lay up in heaven. You don't lay anything up, then... You're not going to have anything when you get there, if you get there, <laughs> right? That's the only distinction in, in, the, in the, you know, when we get to heaven is what we do on earth for God, how we invest in our eternal account. But when it comes to God, when it comes to salvation, there's no big eyes and little U's. There's no class warfare here. There's nothing. We all meet Jesus right at the same thing on our knees praying, seeking the mercy and the grace of God. Amen? In verse uh, 11, he said, um, For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace uh, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. So he's showing it's, it's, it's better to be poor with God in your life than to be rich and not have God in your life. Because, you know, I hate to, um, to speak against the rich <laughs> in, in, in a sense because it's not an evil thing to be rich. It's just wrong when you allow those things to get in the, take the place of God. And many people do. Many rich people do allow that. They do allow their riches to take the place of God instead of you know, serve God, <laughs> enjoy what God gave you, and use it for the glory of God. And so he's saying, just like anything, just like a flower grow up and fade away, just that's what riches are. It's going to fade away, <laughs> right? He said, where moth and rust will corrupt, and the thieves will break through and steal. The wisdom of Jesus keep coming back. Amen? Moth and rust will corrupt, and the thieves will break through and steal. So lay up treasure in heaven. Everything comes to an end. doesn't matter. Amen? Everything comes to an end. It's the, the old German Proverbs. Everything has an end. Except the sausage. That has two ends. <laughs> Verse 12. Verse 12, going back to the emphasis on enduring trials. If we pass the test, when it come our way, we will receive the crown of life. He said in verse 12, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, 
For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. And so we're talking about, like I said, we're teaching this, and, and John, or James is writing to Christians. Christians that were enduring temptations, trials. They're being tried, persecuted, you know, all kind of hardship they're enduring. And so he tell them, he began to ex encourage them. He said, if you endure it, if you make it through, if you don't give in to the, the trials, and, and you know in history gone by, even in, in um, not, not just biblical times, but even in other times when, when England and different people, the Catholic Church and different was persecuting Christians, they will give them a choice. Deny Christ. If you deny Christ, we'll let you go. But if you refuse to, then we'll burn you at the stake. Or we will, you know, whatever punishment will, will be... Uh, will be administered at that time. And, and I went on, you know, the, some were crucified, some were burned alive and all different things. And, and so he's telling them, he said, look, you, you are being tried, you are being tested for your faith, you're going through all these things. He said, if you endure it, not just going through, if you endure it and come out on the other side victorious, he said, you'll receive the crown of life. Amen? If you endure it, you come out on the other side, you will receive the crown of life. Temptation temptations uh, come, but we have to be the one that make it all the way through. Amen? We have to be the one that endure. We have to, as Paul wrote to them, to Timothy, he said, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, we have to be the one that, that endure the stuff. We have to be the one. He said, when we do, when we, when, if we don't fail when the trials come, he said, that's when we get the crown. Right? Then you go back to the very beginning. Adam and Eve were tested. They failed, and they did not get the crown of life. Right? They fell from the grace of God. They fell from their innocence, and they were, you know, and they fall into the, the sin and all that stuff. But if they had endured, if they had made it through their resist, then who knows, you know, what this world would have been like. Totally different place, of course. But he said we have to endure. If we want the crown of life, we have to endure the temptation. We have to, not just I mean, endure, and I'm not understand, just take it. We have to overcome these things, right? We have to be victorious over it. We can't fall prey to it and expect God to still give us the crown. You know, God is not in the business of participation trophy. You got to win this race to get the crown, amen? You got to be, you got to win the race, and you can. You can. With God's help and God's wisdom, God will give you the wisdom to do it. In verse 13, he made it very clear, very clear, that when you're going through trials and all the stuff, God may allow it, but he's not the one that brings it on your life. Some people say, well, God is judging, or God is uh, bring this sickness upon me. That's not God. God doesn't inflict his children with sickness or ailments or any of those things. There is a real devil out there. Amen? He is the tempter. He is the accuser of the brethren. And one of the things he will try to do is to get you to accuse God. God, why are you doing this to me? Right? Why are you allowing me to go through this? Or why is this happening in my life, God? It's not God. God may allow it, but he's not the one doing it. Amen? And so he made it very clear in verse 13. He said, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil or test with evil, neither tempted he any man. The tempter is Satan, not God. Satan is a tempter, and we are his helper. <laughs> it is true, amen? He presents a temptation, and we can either help him with it, or we can just say no, say no, amen? And so he tempted Eve, but she helped him. She took the apple. He didn't give it to her. She was the one that reached up and took that, not the apple, I don't know what it was, <laughs> the fruits. He said apple. But she's the one that took the fruits, right? But he didn't give it to her. He just said, he just presented temptation. She was the one that decided to take it and eat it and give it to her husband to eat right there with her. So he's a tempter, not God. And one man said, what doesn't interest me doesn't tempt me. <laughs> What doesn't interest me doesn't tempt me. I'm not interested in all those things. I'm interested in God. I'm interested in being more like Jesus. I'm interested in, in serving the Lord and being what God wants me to be. And so we'll close it off here with temptation. 
But listen to what he said in verse 15. He said, then when lust had conceived, he said, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his, or verse 13, he said, let no man say when he's tempted, he's tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempt he any man. So Satan is a tempter. We can either help him or not. He said in verse 14, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when sin, when lust had conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Don't fall into error now. He said we're all tempted. Satan presented temptation, but we fall into it uh, when we allow our lust, our desires to take over. And then he said when the lust can it, it, it bring forth sin, and sin bring forth death, which backs up the scripture, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is what? Death. Right? The payment of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Man, that's perfect good timing right to end that <laughs> right there. And uh, we'll continue. Like I said, we're taking it verse by verse and going. But so he's talking to these Christians, just a good summary, telling them they're going through battles, they're going through hardship, they're going through all these things. He said, first thing you got to take control, patience. Take control of your life. Take control of the situation by allowing patience to have its perfect work. The second thing is we need to pray and let God give us wisdom from heaven. Pure, good wisdom that can help us in every aspect of our life. And ask in faith, believe in the Lord and all those things. Trust God, He'll give it to you. And then the third thing is uh, when it comes to temptation, don't blame God. Blame, put it blame on where it is. The two, the two parties in temptation is Satan and us. All right? Satan presented temptation. We can either say yes or no. If we say yes, then we allow our lust to take over. And then we go right into it. And he said when that, when that, when that lust is, is, is conceived, it brings forth sin. Or, or whatever, it brings forth sin. And then sin, when it is finished, it brings forth death. Which means separation from God. And he said, the wages of sin is death. But what? The gift of God. Amen. The gift of God is everlasting life. So thank God that through Jesus Christ, we always win. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, we always win. We need Jesus in our life. And we'll, we'll close off the Bible study with that tonight. The book of James, chapter 1. James can help us to really be victorious in our Christian walk. If you let him. Amen. And for all of you who join us online, we pray you have a wonderful night. Read the book of James. Read it slowly. And let it soak in. And see what uh, wisdom and good things that God can do in your life. Lord willing, for Wednesday evening service. May God bless us and bless us all as we have a wonderful night in the Lord. Father, thank you for the Bible study. I give you praise and glory and honor. We love and appreciate you. As that the Holy Spirit will continue to build us up and strengthen us and help us to do your will. Have your way tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name.